on its skirt. Um, if you don't know, I'm trans. And I just want to explain the scientific basis for trans people. Uh, and why we exist and why are what trans truth is. That's why I want to explain what trans truth is. So, there's this dude called V.S. Ramachandran. And V.S. Ramachandran came up with the first scientific description of phantom limbs. And what he studied first were uh, people with amputations. These people that no longer had limbs were getting sensation in the limbs that they had had amputated. Um, both painful sensations and just regular sensations as if their limbs were there because the brain was processing signals from those areas as if it was still um, present. And, it thought, and the brain basically was like, hey, I'm here, even though the limb was not there. B.S. Ramachandran then did a study in transsexuals and found that 60% of trans men said that they had phantom dicks. Comparatively, after surgery um, in trans women, uh, only 20% of them or somewhere around then had incidences of phantom dicks. And if a guy had to get, a cis guy had to get his member chopped, it was lots of them around the similar amount as trans men had incidents of phantom dicks. On the opposite side, for trans men and cis women, trans men post-op of ch top surgery didn't have high incidences of phantom tits, where, where cis women post-op mastectomy did have high incidence of uh, phantom tits. And I'll include this study in the description below, um, but it seems like and this is what Ramachandran found, that what trans people experience is ingrained. That gender and our experience of our body is ingrained in us. And that it's not something that's easily can be changed. So, transness is a phenomenon that exists. It has biological and neurological bases behind it. And it's not going to go anywhere. So we need to figure out how we're going to incorporate this into our gender and sex paradigm such that trans people can be more included. And that medical staff that are going to work with trans patients, no matter what, know what transness is and how to work with these patients. Because we are real people. Or an entire subset of culture. And I hate when people are like, <laughs> there's not enough of you to like warrant having a massive explosion of trans education and a massive explosion of uh, redefining what it means to be a man and a woman in order to include trans people. And in my opinion, if you continue to say that, then trans people are going to continue to be closeted and the percentage of trans people will be low because we have such a large incidence of hate and a large incidence of misunderstanding and people can't even tell when they're trans because the definition of what it means to be trans is so fucked that people are like, I don't, I don't even understand. I don't understand the definition of trans people by traditional definition. It says that you're, um... Your body doesn't match what's in your mind, which I guess is similar to what I've said here about what Ramachandran said with phantom limbs. But to me, my uh, my bottom parts send signals such that my body perfectly matches what my mind's saying. It, it's just not physically present for you guys, but to me, it's like all there. Um... So, I don't know. And then my titties wouldn't exist had I been on puberty blockers and got in my puberty. So, it seems like 
my body does kind of match what my mind said. Like, my body's the only... To me, the body-mind problem is that it's all one. So I really don't understand when people are like... <laughs> It's just your mind, you're hallucinating something, because, well, I think my body's also sending the signals to my mind. Ramachandran also found, and I learned this in IB seminar in, like, the 11th grade, so don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure he also found that different areas are connected, such that if, if you hit one area that has sensation and is connected to the area that's missing, um, it will fire in the missing area, etc. Um, and that would need more research, but I'm pretty sure there's a way to correlate my body sensations to what my brain is, is feeling, is there with my body. And you can say, no, 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 Kurt, you can't be a man. But I don't, like, it just doesn't make any sense to me what else I would be. Because my body fires, boy. And I can't change it. I wish I could. I don't think any trans person, like, when people are like, transness is a choice, you just want to be difficult. I don't think any trans person wants to be trans. Like, we have to go through hell and high water to be trans. So what are you saying <laughs> when you're like, you chose to be trans? No. All of us tried every other combination of being before we got stuck with what we were. So that doesn't make any sense. But I'll also link... Uh, a video about how our minds are constantly hallucinating by just getting electrical signals from other parts of our body and then figuring out what's going on because our eyes don't necessarily, um, our eyes are what sees, not our brain. Our brain's in a black box. I'm not saying, like, when I look down at my junk, it's just, like, a massive dong. Like, no. Uh, but... It feels like that. <laughs> um, and you can't say that it's like, who are you to tell me what my body is? Just because you can't experience it as a cis woman. And you can't experience it as a, a cis man. If you're a cis man and you're like, you can't have a dick because you don't have a balls and stuff, then I'm just going to tell you, well, you can't have a dick because you don't have a uterus. It doesn't make any sense. It's just basically saying there's only one definition of male and it's me. I'm not saying that your definition of male isn't accurate. I'm just saying that, like, it also needs to include me because I'm also a valid male. And you can, like, make fun of me and say fake male. Sh <laughs> like, whatever the fuck you want to say. But, um... It doesn't change the fact that trans truth is biological and neurological and we're never going to go away. So, take it or leave it. I don't really care. You can take it or leave it. Everyone's living in a different reality. You don't have to include trans people in your reality, but I think we're pretty dope. And I suggest that you try to understand, even if it's hard for you to get because you can't experience it. I'm telling you that I do experience it. And it's what goes on in my mind. So, can at least try. I'll link the articles. Uh, one's a YouTube video. One's just going to be a literal scientific neurological ar neuroscience article. Um, other than that, I'm going to go over the books that I've been reading. Because I have five more minutes. And I've been reading some pretty dope books. Uh, I really liked this. This translation is really good if you can get your hands on it, but if not, the letters are online, and I really like the letters 4 and 6. 4 is about doing your own thing, and 6 is about doing your own thing but being okay with being alone. And um, 4 is also like, talks a lot about 
spirituality and stuff. I marked every single page of four. Because it made me really happy. But six, also, if you're, like, in that hole where you hate being alone and you constantly have to be around people, um, just try reading letter six and see where it gets you. I also read Alan Watts for the first time and liked his voice. And I liked A Supermarket in California and Footnote to How. And I realized that Alan Ginsberg was a homo, which made his sexual, his overt sexual poetry okay with me. I read this, which Alan Watts said to read. It's about the middle way of Buddhism, which was originally created in India. And I guess this is the Tibetan version of it. It's good. Um, I don't think I disagreed really with anything that was in here. Because it speaks of reincarnation. How I speak of reincarnation. Which is we are the energy that's neither created nor destroyed. And it goes over what it went over in this book that I wasn't. I didn't really know what to do with, but I liked it because it kind of got me out of my angry hole. Was it said, if you want to be Brahmin, which is like all that is, you cannot give in to your, your emotions. And you must be uh, pleasant to be around and happy. And that's about it. Like, you must be this. And I didn't know, like... Once you understand pantheism and, like, the basic truths of the universe, I get that. That, like, you just kind of have to take suffering and still be happy with it. But I don't know what to do with that as a minority. So I read a color, The Color Purple by Alice Walker because Alice Walker is a pantheist and The Color Purple is about slaves. And I still haven't really figured it out. But... Alice Walker does kind of go over how to stick up for yourself, but still be good to those that are good to you. And I, I like Alice Walker's book. So if you have time, uh, the letters and the color purple are pretty quick to read and good. Um, hmm. I also read Lewis Carroll's uh, what the tortoise said to Achilles last night at like 3 a.m. And this is what I got from it, basically, that axioms have to be generic as far as, like, axioms which build models of logic. Um, because if you don't have them as generic truths, then you have to encode them per axiom, I mean, per premise in your in your, um, argument, so if you have if P then Q, um, as your generic axiom, then whenever you have a P and then if P then Q, then you can take Q as, um, as a given, basically, uh, but if you don't take that as a given, like, um, if you have P, then P, if P, then Q, and you have to keep on saying that if you have P, and then if you have, if P, then Q, um, then you have Q, and you keep on, how you have to make that for every single, uh, premise that goes P, and then if P, then Q, then you just create infinite regress. And you have to continue to add that same axiom, like, to your, to your proof until the end of time. So axioms, in a way, encode infinite, uh, precise statements in a general statement of truth, which is pretty cool. I've also been reading June Jordan before we go, and June Jordan's really good. I like, uh... I must become a menace to my enemies and Slim Shady. 
So you can look up those.